concerns growing over the stability of what was a tech-focused lender in the Valley. Uh, many called it the backbone of Silicon Valley. It lost nearly $2 billion selling assets following a greater than expected decline in deposits. But here's the problem. Venture capitalists reportedly advising their portfolio companies to pull their money from the bank. Those concerns, of course, rippling through the banking sector. Uh, the KBW Bank Index posted its biggest drop since the pandemic. Regional banks, uh, Comerica, Key Corp, and uh, U.S. Bank Corp hit hard as well. You're looking at those uh, stocks this morning. We're going to discuss this right now uh, because of uh, the potential for contagion risk. Uh, Hugh Sun, CNBC.com banking reporter. Good morning to you. I, to me, it's not even clear to me that, um, you know, Silicon Valley Bank unto itself would be a problem insofar as when you have people like Peter Thiel telling their founders, you got to you got to get your money out, that unto itself can create a run. Yeah. So, Andrew, I've spent the uh, you know yesterday afternoon into the evening talking to founders, talking to VCs. Uh, and the consensus is people are saying, uh, we don't know if Silicon Valley Bank is really under duress or, or uh, going uh, to have issues, but we don't want to wait around to find out. If you're going to panic, it's best to panic early. You don't want to be last in line to trying to get your money out. And so there have been, uh, you know, all portfolio company emails sent from the likes of Founders Funds uh, and other prominent uh, VCs who are saying, you know, if, if, uh, if you've got more than 250K, it's, it's best to move it around. Uh, and I spoke to one founder who, who did so and, and said, you know, it took about five clicks. It wasn't very hard to do on their online uh, banking platform uh, and was able to get their money out. Now, there are other anecdotes of, of people who have had issues with wire transfers not going in quickly uh, and not going in smoothly. And so there could be some breaks in the system. Also, some uh, anecdotes of people having trouble logging on uh, in the afternoon. So that could indicate there's a lot of traffic uh, on the Silicon Valley website. How, how concerned should people be, not just, though, about Silicon Valley uh, Bank itself, but whether we think there's a contagion, whether we think this is going to spread? So, so this, the takeaway I've had from the people I talked to is this is like 2008, but only for crypto and startups. And so the hope is that it stays there. Um, I think the concern in terms of knock-on effect is, you know, I talked to a founder last night who said, I don't have any money at SVP. Um, I, I was told to, to pull it out if I did, but I don't have any exposure there. However, I'm trying to extend uh, a debt refinancing. And Silicon Valley Bank and others were specialists in this, and they're not doing it anymore. And it's risk off. And so I'm not going to be able to make payroll potentially in, in the next coming weeks if I can't do this refinancing. Term sheets for startups are going to get pulled uh, in this person's estimation. And so the knock-on effect is you could have, and we've speculated for a while that there needs to be an event in which all of these unprofitable startups that exist uh, that were created in the, in the zero money, uh, you know, interest uh, era uh, need to actually, you know, be, need, there needs to be a reckoning there. And it's possible that this is a, a thing that incites that. It is not clear. I want to be, you know, careful to say that. But in terms of knock-on effects, I would look there first. Hey, Hugh, I, look, I think this is a bigger issue. I, you start looking through what, what happens, and Jim Cramer talked about this yesterday when we spoke with him on our air. Uh, he said there are cracks everywhere. This is what happens when you have the Fed raising rates. You have liquidity getting drawn in, and it's probably not surprising that one of the places that this would be an issue would either be a crypto bank or a bank that specializes in, in tech startups that are having problems getting money elsewhere, so they need their money back. But I, I do think there's a bigger problem that this is highlighting. And if you look at any of the big banks yesterday that were down 7.8 percent, you're looking week to date numbers here. Citigroup down 8 percent for the week to date. Bank of America down 11 percent. Wells Fargo down by 13 percent. J.P. Morgan was down significantly. Schwab was down 11 or 12 percent yesterday. And it's because a lot of these banks hold something, you know, they, they, it's an accounting rule that says these banks can hold bonds and not mark them mark to market. They can mark them hold to maturity, which is fine. If you plan on holding some of these bonds that you've been holding all along to maturity, you can do that. And those are your best plans that you're holding all these bonds to maturity. But if you have customers who want their money back, 
you can't hold them to maturity. You have to sell them, and in some cases at a very big loss, because bond prices have been collapsing this year as the Fed has raised interest rates. I think that's when you look at some of the bigger banks, what the concern is. People are just digging through. And this may be a case of sell now, ask questions later, but people are digging through looking for these hold to maturity sort of situations where the accounting numbers are valuing the bonds at a much higher level than they'd be worth if you were forced to sell them today. Yeah, yeah Becky, you're, you're absolutely right. So the issue uh, with the potential unrealized losses on, on bond portfolios, uh, bonds obviously worth less as the Fed has been aggressively uh, hiking rates.